Hello Flosstube friends, I'm Nancy Joy Trower. I'm the Stitcher with the Laughing Face. This is Flosstube number 20. Spring break! Woohoo! I'm gonna party and that means I'm gonna sew and stitch and read and do some disc golfing because that's what partying is when you're almost 51. <laughs> but uh, we have two full weeks off for spring break. I'm very excited to just relax and do some things at home. Um, thing, you know, all those little things that you've been meaning to do, get those done. Uh, we are actually going to Wisconsin for a couple days next week to see Phil's mom. So I have some car stitching planned, which I'll share with you in a little bit. Um, but just looking forward to two weeks of not school. <laughs> I do have some grading to do, of course. I'm thinking I'll do some of that in the car because uh, the marking period ends when we get back. So, and it's going to be Easter being so early and our spring break being super early then. Um, it means that it's a very long haul from when we get back in April to the end of the school year, but um, that's okay. We'll get there. We actually have two full weeks plus a day because we are in the path of the eclipse, which is super exciting. Although I did hear something about maybe it might be cloudy, which would totally stink. Like the once in a lifetime, not going to happen for another 150 years and we won't be able to see it. That'll be terrible. Um, but apparently... It's like $1,000 for hotel rooms right now in Buffalo because we will be right in the path. It hits us at 318 in the afternoon. And for that reason, none of the schools in the area have um, school that day. The superintendents talked about it like last summer. And because it's right at dismissal time, they were worried about traffic accidents and people not paying attention to the roads because they were looking at the eclipse instead. So they decided to just keep the kids home and, and let them enjoy it at home and have it be a safe day. So, so we'll see, hopefully it'll be sunny enough or not cloudy enough at 318 that we get to see it. And we get it for three minutes. I know there's some other places that only get it for like 30 seconds or so, but should be, should be kind of cool. We'll see. So, um, so welcome back all of my friends who comment and um, subscribed and liked. And if you're new and you haven't subscribed or liked or made a comment, I would love it if you would do that. It'll help my algorithms a little bit. Um, but I hope that you find something here fun and inspiring. Maybe get some ideas or things you want to stitch or ways you want to finish something. That would be wonderful. Uh, so the last time I saw you was a little over a month ago. Sorry about that. It's just, I always feel like I want to do it every two weeks. And then I don't know, procrastination and just stuff happening. But here we are, beginning of spring break. Um, and I do plan on doing one in two weeks on Eclipse Day because um, I'm planning on doing an FFO marathon over spring break again this year. So um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit too. But the last time I saw you uh, was my floss tube anniversary. And I asked if people would be willing to do a Zoom call and maybe do a Facebook group so that we could get that link out. Um, and I did have some people who said, yes, Zoom, that would be awesome. I think it would be fun to put faces and names together. That'd be great. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, instead of making the Facebook group, is I'm going to do what Linny and Roberta are doing. Um, they're the Sable Stitchers, which is staff accumu Stash Accumulated Beyond Life Expectancy. Um, and we're all right there with you, lady. <laughs> Love them. They're so funny. Um, so they're going to do a Zoom, but they're doing it, their first one with only about 10 people. Um, so with them, it'll be 12 because they said if it gets too bigger, too much bigger than that, it's hard to talk to each other. You're talking over each other. And I thought that was a great idea. So for the first one, um, what I'd like you to do, if you would like to zoom on, I wrote it down, hold on, April 12th, which is um, a couple Fridays from now at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, send me an email to my email address that's in the show notes. And then I'll send you a link through that. So that way um, it won't be so big. We'll be able, and you know, I doubt I'll have to cut it off at like 15 or anything, but we can put some names and faces and get to know each other a little bit more in person um, than just comments. But I do so appreciate those of you who do comment. You have so inspiring and so encouraging and so gracious um, to everything I post. And so I really, truly appreciate that. So I think it'll be fun to uh, get to know each other a little bit more. I was thinking maybe down the road we could start a Facebook group. Um, and I know my name is kind of long. Um, I was talking to somebody about that. So if you're new, Stitcher with a Laughing Face comes from the song Nancy with a Laughing Face. It was my dad's favorite song. We used to sing it when I was little. And when I got married the first time, it was our daddy-daughter dance. Um, it also just so happened my mother's middle name was Nancy. So that was a little coincidence for them. Um, but so when I decided to 
start a floss tube and I thought about that as my name but everybody has stitcher or some sort of you know stitch related thing in their name and so I went with stitcher with a laughing face so kind of long for a Facebook group name so I thought maybe the laughing stitchers might be a good one but let me know what you think about that in the comments so if you want to zoom send me an email and if you think laughing stitchers works for a Facebook name let me know in the comments um, Shelly, who's the antique needle worker, she just started a Facebook group. If you haven't seen that one yet, go check it out. Um, and she, I like her name. She called it the antique needle worker and circle of friends. I thought that was very sweet. So, all right. So quick life updates. I hope not to take too much time up with that, but it has been about a month. So, and I have my notes, so I'll try not to look down too much. So, um, I saw you on February 19th, which was president's day. So a couple weeks ago now. And February 29th was Phil and my anniversary of our first date. So when you meet on the 29th, or I know people who've got kids who were born on the 29th, you only get to really celebrate every four years. So I actually took the day off and we went to um, Bob Evans, which is where we went for breakfast for the first date. And um, so we had breakfast and then we just hung out all day. Didn't really do much else. Um, too cold to go play disc golf or anything like that, but... Um, we may have done that that weekend, later that weekend when it wasn't quite so cold and rainy. Um, but that was a really lovely day just to take off and hang out. And then the following week, I took the Thursday off again. The I think that was the 6th. So Max, who's my son, who's at Temple University, and his girlfriend, Abby, they had spring break that week. So they came up and spent about half of it. They spent about half with her family and about half with ours. Um, so they came up on a Friday. I'm sorry, not Friday. They came up on Wednesday. They drove up and it's a long drive. It's like seven hours. And I was so happy because well, the first thing that Abby asked was if we could have game night again. And we played some games at Christmas time and she asked for Unstable uni Unicorn specifically, which if you've never played is hilarious. And it's one of those games. I like it. We've got a couple like it because with six of us all together and, you know, seven and with Abby here, it's hard to find games that you can have everybody play. So exploding kittens and unstable unicorns and a couple um we play uh what's the other one? munchkin there's a couple of card games like that that really doesn't put a limit on how many people so we played unstable unicorns we played a new version of uno called uno no mercy and it was a riot it was like 45 minutes for one hand but we had a great time and we also played blank slate which is another one we can play with a lot of people so we had a lot of fun with that and then the next day it was beautiful kind of like it is outside today, nice and sunny. I think it was actually close to 70 that day too. So Max and Abby and I went to Canada, which is just a hop, skip and a jump away, just across a big bridge. And we went to Niagara on the Lake, which if you're ever in the Canada, Niagara Falls area, Niagara on the Lake is a beautiful little town. They have a great theater festival in the summer, lots of wineries. Ice wine is really big there because they have the opportunity to make it. And um, great bed and breakfast and hotels and then just a cute little street. So their main street, it's not very big, but so we walked up and down main street, checked out a lot of the shops, had a lunch at one of the oldest pubs on the continent. Um, at least that's what they told us. And, um, we just had a really lovely day together. And then we came home and played some more games and, and then Friday they were heading to Max's dad's house. Um, and I was going to go to school that day, but I woke up not feeling well at all. Um, really just not good. And I felt terrible calling my principal and saying, I can't come to school today after I took the day off in front of it. Um, but there are some things that you cannot suffer your way through <laughs> when you're at school. And I was like, the bathroom is too far from my classroom. So I took that day off and, um, not feeling well, but I sewed all day <laughs> because Saturday of that week. Um, we went to my brother's house. So if you've watched, we played, um, we had a family fantasy football league this year. So it was myself and Phil, Max and Sam, my two boys, Abby played with us. And then my brother, and my nephew, um, and the loser that we decided the punishment was the loser had to host dinner. So my brother lost. No, we did not make him wear like a tutu at a golf tournament. Cause I've seen people who've done that, but we, um, we decided that he would have dinner. So Max said, Hey, we're going to be up. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to do that. So we all met at my brother's house and we hadn't seen them to celebrate Christmas yet either. So the first two weeks of March, I was working very hard to make sure I had everything done because 
you know how that goes. It's like, oh, I know Christmas was in December and I could have had some of the things done by then. But so I had, if you saw last time I did show, um, for my niece and my, my niece and her partner, I made them the pinker and pumpkin little pillows. And of course I don't have pictures because I was finishing stuff in the car and didn't have a chance to take pictures <laughs> when I was there. Um, but I did show last time I made them a little pillows from the prim ornament set that Melissa put out. Um, I think it was 2020 and 2021. She did five ornaments each year. And I love Melissa's stuff at Pinker and Pumpkin. It's all free, which is so incredibly generous of her. It's super cute. Um, she always she has something, one or two things new every single month. Her salt box is everything. Just so cute. So the little pillows turned out really cute. And I had them in a little crate I bought at Dollar Tree. Not Dollar Tree. The Dollar Spot in Target. And then I filled them with very sparkly pine branches from Hobby Lobby. It was like two really big picks and glitter everywhere, but, um, it looked really cute. And then for my niece or my nephew and his wife, I did Annabella's, um, sayings of the seasons. And I don't have the picture cause that's what I was finishing in the car on the way there. Um, but this is what, when I saw those come out last summer, I was like, I must do them. So I did the four little pillows, but I made all of them red and green. So we switched out the blue and the gold in this one. So it was red and green. Um, and I did use a little bit of gold in each one to kind of tie it all together. And so I made those into pillows, um, and put Rick Rack around the edges and that came out really cute. So I did, actually did five pillows cause there's only four here. So I did the fifth one for the rule, the odd rule. So those were really cute. But most of what I spent my time on working on was the quilt for my brother, and my sister-in-law. So I'm going to have to insert a picture here because I can't, it's too big for me to show it, um, here in my little teeny porch space and it's really big and heavy and it'll be hard for me to hold up. So when it's all done, I'll show you, I'll do like the quilting reveal where you unroll it and you know, in slow motion it falls down. But, um, so this is the point set of log cabin that, um, I made for them. And I've, I tried really hard to not be like, here's your Christmas present. It's not done yet. But that, that's what happened. I just could not get it. Even, you know, it's my own darn fault. I should have started on it sooner, but, um, it has turned out really well and it's probably one of my favorite things I've ever made. Um, so the log cabin, I love those cause they're very versatile in how you do it, whether how wide your strips are going to be, how you set it. I love how you can have all the different arrangements and make the quilts look totally different depending on how you set the blocks. So I went with a diamond on this one with the bright colored white on the inside and then the cream colored, more jewel tones for the bigger diamond. Um, it's got a, and I have started, I, sorry, got ahead of myself. Um, put a little bit of a border, thin black strip to kind of frame it. And then I did the keyboard border using some of the other, like some of the, the fabrics from the, the logs. And then another black border on the outside to really frame it off. I rarely do anything without a border because it makes the binding better, like, firmer because you're not going into lots of little squares or anything like that. You've got like one strip, the binding can really, um, not adhere to, but the binding can be really, um, sturdy, especially on something that's going to be used. If it was something that's just a wall hanging, not a big deal, but for something that's going to be used and they've got dogs, you want a nice sturdy binding on the edge there. The back is this really cute, um, flannel peppermint pattern. And then, um, my, one of my quilty friends at school, Gave me the idea to do um, to quilt in the diamond pattern. I didn't want to stitch in the ditch for the whole thing because it doesn't seem to like, I don't know, it doesn't have like movement to it sort of. Like this kind of gives it a little bit more framework. I don't know what's the right word, but um, contrast, I guess. And having the, the, flaw, the thread stick out and you can see the diamond throughout the pattern. I did stitch in the ditch for the big six, around each of the 16 blocks and around the poinsettias. Um, otherwise it wasn't quilted enough and I didn't want the batting to, to shift or anything. So, um, so I did show, take it with me, showed it to my brother, and my sister-in-law and it was like, yeah, I have to take it back. But that's one of the things I'm going to work on this week. I'm very much looking forward to it because it is beautiful. Um, in my opinion, I, I'm really proud of how it came out. And, um, now I said, it gives us the excuse that we get to meet in the middle. They live in Syracuse. So Rochester is kind of middle-ish. And we can meet and have lunch and I can give it to him then. So that's what I hope to, to do soon. Um, 
So besides sewing that on spring break, um, I do also have a whole bunch to read. Um, I've been reading a lot on my Kindle Unlimited because it's so easy. It's such a um, instant gratification because you finish a book, it's like, plink, there's a new one. But I have stacks and stacks of actual books that I need to read. So I do intend on reading a little bit every morning, um, you know, so I can get to all those things that I've been wanting to read. I brought home a few things from school. Not a ton. I used to bring home like bags of books every vacation, but I don't know, not, not so much. Um, but I have a bunch of books. I get gift cards a lot for Barnes and Noble, so I got to use them. Uh, so I do have quite a few things I want to read. Lots of sewing with the quilt. Um, maybe another quilt or two to be working on as well. Um, stitching, of course, like crazy and an FFO marathon. So I'll show you some of those things in a little bit. All right. So I'm going to take just a quick sip of my coffee. and do some previous finishes. So I know St. Patrick's Day is long gone, but that's really the only um, previous finishes I have to show you. I don't really have a lot for spring, which is one of the things I wanna fix. I wanna fix that. I don't want to do a lot of springy things that can be left up for a couple of months at a time. So, but this one, this I did a couple of years ago. I don't even know for sure. And it was over a couple of years because I would stitch the little shamrocks every March and then when I had several of them all together, I sewed them into this banner and it's just kind of a model green. So it didn't really conflict, you know, or, um, compete with the patterns. So all of these are from Daniel Jackson, who, um, shared the patterns on a website. I don't know whether it's Camu or Camus, it's C-A-M-U-S. Um, they're all free. I found them all on Pinterest. And I know there's at least 10 because he had a 10th anniversary one. So these are ones that, this one I liked with the Celtic knot. This one has um, a little bit more delicate, kind of lacy look to it. That one has an Irish blessing in it. That one has little shamrocks inside of it. And that one's kind of a cool plaid looking one. And then I used, I actually used ribbon to bind it. Um, I pulled out the metal on the sides and bound. And again, because it's a wall hanging, it's not going to do anything to it. So I like this. We have this one spot in our dining room. That's a very skinny space between the door of one of the boys' bedrooms and a built-in bookcase. And so have something long there. Um, I kind of like to fill up that space. So like I said, those are free. This one was another one that I did. Um, and I kind of took a page out of Priscilla's book on this one because she was doing a lot of things. But even before she started designing, I used to follow her blog spot. And she, I loved how she finished things, you know, using all kinds of stuff, not just putting it in a frame. And she had stuff on blocks, which I couldn't find. So this is on an artist canvas. It was just a square one. It came in a set of two. And then I just trimmed it with a ribbon and a little bow in the corner. And these are all done on Ada. Um, so there's that. And this one I probably did show last year, but I kind of upgraded the finish on it. So this is Leprechaun Lane from Priscilla and Chelsea. Um, done on black linen from Wichelt, 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 however you say it. And I thought that when I finished it last year, I would put it on a little easel because I have this really cute easel from the dollar store that's nice. I like because you know, it creates different heights in your display. And I was kind of shocked because when I took this out of the drawer where I keep it, it didn't have magnets. And I was like, oh, I must have just put it on an easel. But then I was looking through my bucket of um, finishing pieces and I had this from Hobby Lobby at the end of fall. Got it on sale. Um, I also have a burgundy one and I know they had a cream colored one, which I'm going to keep an eye out for again this year because that'll be so versatile. But I thought it just was perfect. So I magnet and washered that. And then my last previous finish that St. Patrick's is a table runner. Um, I got this set of fabric from Joann's several years ago. It was a very cute collection. Just loved it. Added the green one was something I think I already had. But um, just loved it. This one says Lucky in it. And then the back is super cute fabric too. So I just made a table runner by sewing a whole bunch of strips together put the border on it and then stitched in the ditch in between the two, all the strips, but I used a gold metallic to go with it. So those are my previous finishes. 
Um, so then that means that we are on to what I've been working on. So the beginning of the year, I was totally gung ho about 24 and 24. I made a list of all the patterns I bought last year, maybe even a little year before that I hadn't had a chance to stitch giant list. It was two sided piece of paper. Um, <laughs> went through and I picked out one big pattern and one small one for each month, put them all in bags, put labels on the bags, ready to go. And then I kind of failed miserably so far. It's only March, so I still <laughs> I can redeem myself. But in February, I was going to do Erin Elizabeth's farmhouse, and I stitched on it for one day. Only one day. So that is now going to be my leap year start. And even though I didn't work on it on the 29th, because that was our anniversary day, I am going to pull that out every 29th and work on it because it's super cute. She's got, I love her little houses. The plaid one at Christmas, so cute. She's got a little stitching shed one. She's got one for 4th of July, super cute. Her, the Valentine's Day one she just did. So her houses are really cute. So the, um, sorry, itchy nose. Isn't that a thing? Everybody starts doing their floss tube and their nose starts itching. itching. Uh, so I didn't do very well in, 20, in January. Um, I did finish the small and you'll see that as part of my, um, FFO marathon. And then February, I did a little bit better. Uh, my small, I had, um, Sorry, it's still very itchy. Um, our love story was a roundabout from last year, and I did get that done. And I also did the Love You More roundabout that came out this year. So those were done in a set, finished them together, hung them up. That was awesome. And then they came out with all those sassy strippers that were all bee related. And I did all of those because you know me and bees. It's a thing. So I did I did six things in February. I mean, that's pretty hefty amount. Um, but then I did do go ahead and get started on my big one for February that I plan to do was the Valentine city from stitching with the housewives and do all four of them in a row. So let me grab, I've got this laundry basket filled with stuff at my feet here. I'm going to find where it is. So I did one of those. Um, and then I was kind of like Valentine stayed out. So I, I'm going to do all four, and so I did number three, because that was in the middle. I'm a middle starter. Um, I'm too afraid of, that's how I've been doing it for 40 years. So I didn't want to start on the edge and then realize I was out of room or something. So I hand dyed the, the Monaco with pink, and I kind of wish now I'd used Petal Pink, which I think is the next lightest shade of pink writ dye. This is the... No, I'm sorry. This is petal pink. There's like a rose pink that's one shade lighter. And I probably should have used that because I really just wanted it to be kind of like kissed with pink. But this is super bright. That's okay. I like it. Um, I did switch out a color. The This was Blushing Beauty. And so that was like 150 something. And I went with 960 because this was, otherwise it blended in too much. So this was my first one. And I will get to the rest of them. Um, I was kind of Valentine's Day out, like I said, but I took, I have a, a cross-stitching club at my school on Tuesdays. So I took my bag of Valentine's Day stuff with me there and figured an hour a week I can get a little bit done on it, you know, and because there's a few things that are, I have the loads of love from Primrose and it's not too far. It really doesn't have a ton left on it. Soon, an hour every week, maybe I will actually get something done on that. So I worked on that. And then um, when March rolled around, I was like, okay, now it's time for St. Patrick's Day. So I went to Etsy and I looked up to see what I could find. So these are my St. Patty's Day stitches. So the first one which, and I bought a couple little things because I figured I still wanted to work on my March 24 and 24. So the first one is called Lucky Curls, and that is from Needle Treasure Nook. And I did it on Carolina Linen with Lucky Sprout because I wanted something variegated. I had a little bit um, left of pickle from Color and Cotton, but not enough. But you can see there's a little variegation in it with a lucky sprout. So that was a quick one. And that'll be in my marathon this week. And then um, the next one, so cute. And I've now fallen in love with this, this designer. 
Her stuff is adorable. So it's Carolyn's Needle Art. And then designer's name is Caroline. And I saw this cute little in and I was like, oh my gosh, look at the sheep. It is all done. Oops. In French knots. It's like, how stinking cute is that? So I got this one and I got to work on it, but the house took a while. So I kind of stalled a little bit. Um, but since then I've discovered she's got a whole bunch of adorable ins. There's a strawberry one. There's a gingerbread one. Um, basically like one for every month, but Halloween one. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. So I will be going back to her shop many times. She was, um, it was really nice because I got an email from her when I bought the patterns and it wasn't just an automated one. Um, cause I'm going to show you one in a minute when I just bought yesterday. So very sweet, nice to interact with her. So was the needle treasures nook lady. So this is as far as I got on this one. Um, got the thatch, the little house is almost done. Just have the window and then I can start going over here and doing that adorable sheep. It does have some beads on it, which, um, I think will be fun to do as well. And I'll do those at the end. So I'm going to put her in the bottom. If you like cute little houses, check out Carolyn. Just love her stuff. And I'll show you the other one in just a minute. And then the other one I got was an Emily Call. I don't know where the picture is, but it was Lucky Leprechaun. Oh, and so the Dublin Inn and the Lucky Leprechaun, I did these on a piece of Irish linen that I tea dyed myself. I was trying to get more modeled for some of the things that, you know, there are some stitchings like the more samplery, vintagey looking things that you want it to have kind of that modeled antique look to it. So I thought I would give tea dyeing a try and it didn't work so well. Like I didn't, Chelsea said, don't put it so that you've got parts sticking up too high because they'll burn. Chelsea was right. Always listen to Chelsea. Um, but I still think it turned out cute. And the funny thing is when I just ironed these, you can still smell the tea. It's like heat activated that you can smell the tea. So I thought that was funny. But this one, this little guy I started on St. Patrick's Day, um, pretty much did the whole thing in that one day and just finished it up with a few of the flowers and the lucky at the top. It's got a little bit of gold sparkle on his belt buckle and then his pot of gold. So that was very cute. And then I um, got to work on my April month to month. Um, but then yesterday I started something else and it's another Carolyn's. Hold on, let me grab my basket here. So I was watching Sweetwater Stitcher, Jessica, who I love to watch. She has such great taste and her finishes are really good. Um, and she was talking about how she was going to start an Easter stitch. And then she was watching someone else. I can't remember who it was, so sorry about that. But she watched someone else who said they were going to stitch on it all of, starting on Palm Sunday, so stitching on it all of Holy Week. And I thought that was just a beautiful idea. So I went yesterday and looked for something that I could do quickly, because when I was decorating for Easter, I don't, I have a lot of bunnies. I don't have a ton of stuff that is actually talking about or showing, you know, the real reason why we celebrate Easter. And then I found this on Carolyn's site. So this is when I saw some of her other ends. And um, so I bought this yesterday and she emailed me almost right away through Etsy saying, thank you for purchasing it. And I emailed her back and said, it's going to be my Holy Week stitch. And, um, and so she emailed me back again. So very nice to have that very quick interaction with her. So what I decided to do, show that again, is I'm going to do a flower a day and then I'm going to do the border like, you know, the, um, the he is risen. I'm going to do the, like the lace and the beads. And I think I'm going to do the actual, he is risen on Easter. Um, so there are beads in the bottom. There's beads in the lilies, which I think was very cute. Um, I did switch out the colors. She called for 30, 3052 and 3053. And I went with 33, 42 and 43, just cause a little darker. So again, I used my my own hand dyed tea linen, but I like how it turned out so far. I'm going to do the smaller flower today. Then, then there's, I think that's like Lily in the Valley next to it or something. Um, and I was kind of being intentional about it yesterday when I worked on it, that I didn't put on, you know, my Hallmark movie mystery or watch another floss tube. Um, I put on some music and I used to be the youth group coordinator at my church and, um, educational coordinator for our, um, 
our whole Sunday school program. So I have a lot of really great praise music on my iPad, a lot of the newsboys and casting crowns. And so I put that on while I was stitching and staying along and just kind of was more intentional about that stitch. So, um, I think she did it in a pillow and the Dublin Inn was in a pillow. I think I'll probably find like some pretty gold square frame to use instead. All right. So my April, no wait, I'm still on March, <laughs> March month to month. Or, sorry, March 24 and 24. That's what I was looking for. So I had two projects picked out for that. And my small one is from Cherry Hill Stitchery. She's got such cute stuff. This one is Make Pretty Things. And this one's pretty small. So I think I still might even, is there a terrible glare? Is it just my phone? Um, I think I might be able to actually get this one done in the month. I mean, I got a week left, but I'm on break. And then the other one is Hive Rules. Again, you know me and bees. It's a thing. Can't help it. Um, and so this is what I have done so far on that. And I really only worked on it for a couple of nights. Um, cause I think I started it, started on the 19th when I finished the leprechaun and I didn't work on it yesterday but I've worked on it a little bit um, each night since then. So I think this one is actually doable as well, getting this one done this week, because I've already got two sections done and I only worked on it, I think, three nights. So um, and I'll probably be working on that later today. So that's my March 24 and 24. Um, now, the other thing that I worked on yesterday, because I decided that this is going to be my Sunday stitch, even though it's not really like religious, but it's what I'm going to work on on Sundays, um, was supposed to be my birthday sale. So this is with thy hands from Teresa Kogut and it is just gorgeous. Just love it. I'm doing it on Heartland. I think it's a, I think it's 32 count Heartland, which like now I want to bolt because it does have, it does have that modeling I was looking for and that it's very soft and nice to work with. So, um, so I worked a little bit on this yesterday. So I'm doing some house building, got some more windows. I got, I think that's, I think it's supposed to be a dog. And then there's a, like a deer. I don't have his antlers on yet. And then I started on the hand that's going to go here. Now my friend Kay, who is one of my followers, hey Kay, um, she's also working on it and she had emailed me a picture and she's much farther than I am. Um, and she was saying that she wasn't sure about the trees. And so when I was looking at the pattern very closely yesterday, um, she was saying on hers that she didn't feel there was enough contrast and she was using the DMC recommendation instead of the, um, I think it's weeks dye works for the tree, the green color. And I was looking at the pattern and I'm pretty sure that in the pattern, the tree, oh wait, hold on. Um, so here in the tree, there's like a little circle pattern. It's not stitched in the picture. In the pattern, it calls for a contrasting green, but I'm pretty sure that that is just the fabric coming through. So hopefully that helps Kay out. I already emailed her back about it. Um, but then when I was like really intently looking at this yesterday, I was like, I think I'm going to wait and order the kudzu. I was going to do it with the DMC because I don't have an LNS. As you know, although there is a new one opening in Lockport sometime this year. Very excited. Um, so I did, when I put my next order in, I'll probably at like that quarter shop or I'll try to get some. But I do just love that. And it's going to be in my stitching room at some point. So that was the other thing that I worked on in the past month. All right. So April plans, because April is not too far away. Um, so my... Mm, mm, 24 and 24. I keep saying month and month to month and that's not what it is. So my 24 and 24 plan is the, oh, sorry, I've got a little note on there. Like I need the floss and the fabric for that. I'm going to do, um, the bumblebee wishes. Now I think I'm going to change summer to maybe flower wishes and bumblebee kisses because I leave my bees up from February until September. Um, cause I have so much of them that, they're just, it's kind of like what the decoration is in our dining room. So there's bee stuff everywhere. And then 
especially in the summer, I don't have a ton of, I have a little bit of 4th of July kind of stuff, but that's like tucked in between. So I think I'm going to switch that out. Um, or oh, I know not summer sunshine. I'm going to change that to sunshine. So sunshine wishes and bumblebee kisses. Cause then it goes with the, the S I'll just have to be creative with the lettering there. Um, but that's a pretty quick one. Those ones take like a day. They're really not that that hard to get done. And then my other one is Honey Bee Garden. Love this one. It was came out and I actually bought it last year right after market. Obviously never got to it. I do have all of the called for classic color works and I have this beautiful blue denim that I dyed and I use the other half of the blue denim for the strawberry festival, which I'm going to do all four of those in a row as well. So here's what I was thinking about this. So I mentioned that we're going um, to Wisconsin to see Phil's mom. And so it's nine hours there and nine hours back. So that is a lot of time in the car. I probably do need to do some grading because it's the bane of my existence and it needs to get done. But um, I was thinking about what to work on. So last summer when we went, I took with me, I had two Ada projects because Ada seems to work well for me in the car. You can see the holes better. Let's face it. It's a lot easier to see it. Um, but I really don't have a lot of Ada projects planned. So then I thought of like, oh, if I very, very careful and count 5 million times, I'm going to stitch before we go. I'm going to stitch the outline of Honey Bee. So then when I'm in the car, even though it's going to be on, on Monaco, once you've already made the outline, then it's really easy to see where your two over two is going to be. Um, and considering that it's black coffee, so you're going to do one stitch at a time, it should be very easy just to fill in, in the car and not worry about counting too much. And then my other project for the car is, this is why I kept saying month to month, is April month to month. So I just bought this and I just ordered the, the floss. Although I was looking at my order and I was like, oh, I left off some floss for the other project. So I emailed Fat Quarter Shop really quick, like, hey, I forgot my floss. Can I add some more? I don't know whether they'll be able to or not, but figured I would ask and it hasn't gone out yet. So now I bought this and I have a couple of the month to months on it. I did the August one on here. This is, um, cracked pine and it lends itself very, very well kind of with the barn look it kind of goes with the barn. So I did October's on this. I did, um, August on it. What was the other one? I did three. Not September. September done something else. Anyway, I did three of them on here. Um, I don't know. Can't remember now. Brain's going. Um, so, but I do have enough to do one more. So I got the April. Super pretty. And so that is another one that I can work on in the car because it's Ada and it's easy to see. So that's part of my plans for April with 24 for 24. Um, and then I did also just pick up, now I have, the only one I don't have, oddly enough, is the first one that came out. But I love the Welcome Homes from Priscilla and Chelsea. And so I got the spring one. Order the floss. This is the ones that I'm missing a few. So hopefully I can still get them. Or I'll just get stuff done. Now they were out of bamboo. But honestly, I don't really see much of a difference between bamboo when you're looking at the over dyed. I don't see much variegation in it. So I'm just going to do it in 3865, which is what they recommend. And then um, do as much as I can with the colors that I have. And then I can fill them in later on. So that is for April as well. Um, and then I have other B things that I've started. Then I'll try to go back and do. We'll see how much I actually get done in April. All right. So that's almost everything. Um, I do have some FF or some, I can't talk. Sorry. <laughs> Let me back up. I always say at school, I haven't had enough coffee when I like stumble over my words when I'm teaching. Um, I am going to do an FFO marathon again this break. So I do plan on doing a video in two weeks to show you everything that I got done. Some of the things I just showed you will be part of that, but I do have a whole bunch of stuff that I've been stitching like since last spring break that didn't get FFO in time. Um, I do a lot of seasonal stitching, mostly seasonal, um, trying to break out of that a little bit with some of the, like the, with my, um, 
with my hands and some of the stuff that I want to do for my crafting space that I want to have a lot of stitchings about stitching there. Um, but I haven't had a chance, even though I was over the summer, like I would finish something and then the holiday would pass and I was like, I'll just put it away. So, cause I stitch like all the way up leading to 4th of July or Halloween or whatever. And then I'm on to the next season. So I don't stop and get stuff ready. So I do have a bunch of stuff I'm going to FFO. So I'm going to pause for one second. I'm going to go grab it. I'm not going to go through incredible amount of detail on each of them, but I am just going to show you like, here's like the little parade of FFOing and then you'll get to see them in two weeks when they're done. So hold on one second. All right. So here's my quick run through of everything I want to FFO in the next week or two weeks. So this one I stitched just a little bit ago in January. I was like, I don't have enough wintry stuff. So this was a Doreen Jones. Yes. Yeah. Doreen, not the other one. It's Shannon and Christine. Their stuff is a little similar, but this is a Doreen. It was a freebie on Iridescent Ada. So that's going to become a little pillow. And then this was also a freebie from Doreen. Tiny. I did this on ice blue, 32 count linen. So that will also be on a little pillow. And then this is my January 24th for 24, the um, small, this was Snowman Wishes or Winter Wishes and Snowman Kisses. And that's probably going to go, I have a little house that I switch out those on. So that's probably going to go there. Now this one I might not do because I want to do all the strawberry stuff the same. So I might hold off on that one, but that's Strawberry Farm from... Stitching with Housewives. I love all their strawberry stuff. And they just came out with a new one. Mm -hmm. The June month to month. Yep, I'm going to have to do that. So this was um, another market release last year. And I did the sal along with Primrose. And there's a big line up there. Um, but this is with the color and cotton floss. And I love that stuff now. I would like go zip, like teleport myself to their store and just buy everything. Because I love their stuff. So this is um, Stitcher's Garden from Tiny Modernist. And um, this is going to go on a frame. Uh, I picked something up at Hobby Lobby and I painted it red. Didn't like the color, so I picked a different red that I'm going to paint over it. And hopefully that one will be right. Bloom Where You're Planted from Stitching with the Housewives. Um, and the rounds are the ones this time that are going to be my challenge. Because I'm going to have to... Ooh, I think I actually just stained that with something. Oh, goodness, there's a thing on there. Um, luckily, it's not in the stitching part. Um, I don't have the stitching circles from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, so I'm going to try using my Create a Memory Circle Cutter and use that to cut the sticky board. So we'll see how that goes. But um, that's kind of my challenge for this time is getting rounds and doing them well. So this is a set. This was Hello Bunny, I think was the name because that's what's on the other one. This is Emily Call, and I did this last year for Easter, and then they never got made. Probably into little pillows, because there's a set of two. And that's done on my go-to Carolina linen. Very springy and delicate. Have to find just the right orange. I think I'll probably use an orange to make those into pillows. This is a Lizzie Kate. I've had this one done for years. Oops. Um, and just never made it into a pillow. So probably do another piece of purple underneath it to make it bigger um, and into a little purple pillow. And then we get to the patriotic stuff. So this is Star Spangled Street from Primrose. And this one I used my own color conversion on it. I used because the Stitcher's Garden was not very big, so there was a lot of floss left. And I loved that color in cotton floss. And I was like, I'm not going to just stick it in a drawer in a baggie and never use it. I wanted to use it for something. So I kind of, I just, like I said, I used my own colorway. I did have some DMC in here, maybe a couple, like, mixed together. I wrote it all down somewhere. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do that. I think I have a long frame, a long skinny frame that might work for that. But I really like how that one turned out. And then I also have, I think this was part of a sow Nicole Spore did last year. She did all the Cherry Hill um, 
patriotic stuff. And I can't remember which one this is. Sorry. But I thought that turned out really well. Oh, the other, the Primrose one was on raw Belfast linen, which I want like a yard, like a bolt of that because it like, it goes with so many things and it makes the white pop. This is on just regular tea dyed linen. Yep. Tea dyed linen. So Cherry Hill Citry. Not sure. Pillow? Frame? Not sure about that one. This is a Pinker and Pumpkin. Did that on my Carolina Linen Go-To, which I get at Joanne, which maybe I'm going to have to stockpile because they declared bankruptcy or they're going to. Um, I did have to outline the little eagle's head to make him stand out a little bit more, but this was one of their salt boxes. See what I mean? She's so cute. Everything she does is so cute. So that'll most likely be a pillow. And I do have some cool patriotic fabric I can go take a look at. Then I have Halloween stuff. This is the one that's going to be tricky because I did not leave myself enough space between those two circles and I could kick myself. This is purple Monaco that I hand dyed myself a couple Halloweens ago. These are the Stitching with the Housewives roundabout and I used a metallic, it's called a toile. It's from DMC. So, um, so you can see it's kind of sparkly and then I'm pretty sure that those ghosts glow in the dark. I'm pretty sure I did that. So I have one of those. Hobby Lobby has that in the unfinished wood, wood section. They have like the, it's not a banner, it's like a bell pole. So it's like a hanging thing with four wooden circles on it. So I'm going to paint, I have one of those. I'm going to paint all of the black. And then hopefully I will be able to get these on rounds and then mount it, like do another round behind it with a fabric. Um, and hopefully they'll, hopefully I left myself enough. This is Happy Haunting from Primrose, their little house series. This is on a piece of Stormy Night that I had left over. I bought, I bought a piece to do Annabella's Halloween Is, and which I love. Um, it's going to be awesome when it's done. I did that all in the Etoile Sparkly and um, the, floor, the Glow in the Dark White. So this one though, I did it over three. Because Nettie had done it over two, or no, I'm sorry. Nettie had done it on a 10 count. And it looked so cute big. And if you did it just over two, it would be very, very small. So I did it over three. And it worked out pretty well. Again, that goes glows in the dark. And I'm probably going to do that. Probably a pillow. I haven't decided yet. Then this one, it, I don't even, I've had this done for years and years and years and years and never got to it. I'm going to use these two fabrics to do a pillow, which I'm sure I've used on something else, but I like them because they don't, they're good blenders as I think Lindsay would say. And then this is another primrose. This I did on vintage country mocha. And now I want a bolt of that because that works really well for a lot of things. That was using the Etoile. That was like my test piece for the sparkly. So it's a little bit of sparkly. And then this is the fabric that I'm going to use to go with that. I have a ton of it because I used it in my classroom, just like on a table, like on a, one of my tables, but, um, so cute. And then this one needs a little TLC. Oh my gosh, there's something on it. Huh? That's not good. There's something on my stitching. So this is from, oh gosh, 1990 something. And it was the first thing I did with the glow in the dark. And I had it in one of those frames that you can make yourself and the frame fell apart. What the heck? There is something stuck to my stitching. I had not noticed that before. It's pretty much gone now. I also misspelled Halloween. So it says happy Halloween. Not sure what I'm going to do there. And I, the stitching, the frame when I put it together was too short. So that's why there's like mice down here. There was something else here and I just cut it off with the bat, but I'm going to do something with this. I'm probably going to leave it on the board that it's on. Um, although it has masking tape on the back. So I'm going to fix that and then mount it on something else. So it can go out again this year. Um, that's from probably just the 
needlework and country cross stitch from the 90s. And then the last little thing is, this is almost done, except I ran out of polyfill when I was stuffing it. So I'm going to finish stuffing this and sew it together. But that is the Autumn Quaker from Primrose. So that is the whirlwind of everything I'm going to FFO, hopefully, except maybe that Strawberry Farm, because I want to do, I have a couple of the other Strawberry Farms that, like, the stuff that came out that same year, I want to do them all together. Yeah. I think berries, I'm almost as bad about berries as I am about bees, because I have a lot of strawberry stuff. So, so that's what, um, that's what I've been up to. That's what I'm planning on. Um, I will see you again in two weeks, so you can see what I, did I actually get done. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have a couple of things I have to do today, so I'm not going to, I'm probably going to start FFOing tomorrow. I want to do the FFOing first and then be working on the quilts um, a little bit every day. And then, because um, this week it's just Phil and me, Brooke and Vincer with their mom. So, but we're planning on doing some disc golfing and going out and doing some other things as well. So if you're on spring break, I hope you have a great one. If you're not on spring break, um, I hope you still are able to enjoy some nice weather. Hopefully it doesn't snow anymore. We had some on Saturday. Had to actually shovel. Um, but I hope you have a lovely Easter. Um, a meaningful Holy Week and a lovely Easter. And uh, we'll see you again in two weeks. Thanks again for stopping by. And I'll see you. Um, happy stitching. Bye-bye.